Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vaga Maradian here at the Paris Air Show at the historic Le Bourget Airfield outside the French capital. Our coverage here is sponsored by L3 Technologies and Leonardo DRS. And we have with us Rick Hughes, who is uh, the president of Raytheon Space and Airborne Systems. And full disclosure, Raytheon is also uh, one of our sponsors. Rick, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Vago. It's good to be here. Uh, great to be here. It's always, uh, it's always a fantastic show. We're here on the, the first day. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about um, where you guys are placing some of your investments and what are the big campaigns you guys, you know, and how you see the whole global environment for space and airborne systems. It's a, it's, it's a very competitive space that you guys are in. You guys are in the high end of capability uh, in, in the space. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, where you're investing for the future and what are the big opportunities you guys are pursuing? Sure. Well, as you know, the, the, the world is a very dangerous place. It's getting more dangerous every day. The threat environment is evolving at a pace uh, that I've never seen it evolve this, this rapidly before. So we're working on a series of uh, capabilities that are specifically designed to allow our warfighters to prosecute their missions uh, successfully and make the world a safer place. Now along those lines, we're focused in areas like persistent counter air, uh, cyber defense of our product base, which I think is very important in this environment, uh, space protection, and advanced ISR capabilities. We're also looking at next generation capabilities such as high energy lasers, uh, precision frequency and time, and a few other uh, key capabilities that we believe will give our warfighters the unfair advantage which they deserve. Multi-spectral targeting is one of the things that you guys pride yourselves on. The current system is on some 22 aircraft, C-130, Predator, Reaper has your system, but it's a larger system. One of the big things you've unveiled here, you know, your hot product, your hot reveal here, was the compact version of that MTS system. Talk to us a little bit about the kind of market opportunities that's going to unlock for you guys and you know what kind of platforms and also what are some of the non-traditional applications for this that you guys see? Sure. The uh, multi-target, multi-spectral targeting system is a very advanced EOIR capability uh, that's the high end of the product line. It's designed to go on the larger aircraft. What this product does is takes those advanced EO capabilities and puts them in a smaller, lighter weight, more affordable package that opens up a wealth of new market opportunities for us, you know, including smaller UAVs, the smaller helicopters, and a series of platforms that don't have the swap capabilities to handle a larger MTS product line. And, and by swap, you mean the space weight and power? Space weight that, and power, exactly. The, the, the tyrannical four that drive everything. It's very important to the airborne marketplace to have the lowest swap you can have. Um, do you see any sort of non-traditional applications for this as well? For example, you know, commercial providers and users who might not be interested in kind of this kind of capability? Absolutely. The, uh, the commercial ISR marketplace uh, is beginning to grow. We're looking at it both in terms of uh, airborne and spaceborne platforms. Not so much for the MTS line, but for ISR in general, uh, for commercial applications that do uh, everything from uh, agriculture to mining. Um, you know, you mentioned space. Space is an important piece of your portfolio. Uh, space is becoming a much more contested environment than it has in a very, very long time. You guys have been operating there. How is that going to be changing the space game when you're looking at things that are not just kinetic threats but electronic threats? How does that change the entire uh, question of resilience? You know, everybody's talking about, okay, what happens if you lose satellites and spacecraft and how you build that resilience? How's the whole business model in that military space, but also in the commercial space environment, changing that will in turn drive the kind of investments that you guys are making? So resiliency in space and con contested space is certainly uh, uh, very much on everybody's mind these days. We're very focused on technologies that enhance the space protection capabilities of the U.S. assets. And that's true from 
uh, electronic protection, th through cyber protection, uh, any one of the threats that can impact one of our systems are things that we're considering in our portfolio of space protection capabilities. Do you, um, a cyber, you guys have been placing some big bets, and I want to get to uh, Jammer as well. That was a very big win for you, the Navy's next generation Jammer contract. Uh, that was one of the must wins that uh, the CEO at the time, Bill Swanson, was like, hey, we're going to win that. We're going to make the investment there. Missile defense radar for the Navy, that was a big investment uh, point. Uh, and then cyber also has been a big investment point. From the standpoint of cyber, how is the company's drive to build cyber and improve cyber in products, including into legacy products, what are sort of the opportunities, but also the challenges of doing that with a lot of sort of older systems, for example, that require some re-engineering in order to sort of bring them up to the kind of cyber spec that you guys and your customers are demanding? Uh, what we're focused on at SAS is protecting uh, the assets that currently exist. And to that end, we've developed a capability that we refer to as ESPI, or Embedded a secure processing initiative. And what it allows you to do is protect relatively simply, without a major upgrade, uh, existing assets. And we think it's a capability that uh, is absolutely needed in this environment. You can't watch TV, you can't read a newspaper without hearing about uh, some cyber attack somewhere in the world. Let me take you to the next generation jammer. Um, that was a, a big win for you guys in 2013. Uh, bring us up to speed on the program and how you're leveraging what you've developed into international markets uh, as well, where there is a renaissance of demand for operating in contested environments, Russia being a threat, you know, uh, particularly after the Crimea invasion, so that everybody is sort of more focused on that sort of peer on peer as opposed to permissive environments. So you're correct, Nick, the Next Generation Jammer was a very important win for us. We're very pleased with that. The program is uh, right on track. It just completed CDR, which is a critical design review. Uh, and we're looking at expanding that franchise into the, uh, the different increments, increment two and increment three that are future capabilities. Uh, there are a few countries uh, that are approved for export uh, that we're looking at working with. Uh, but the big thing with this kind of technology, uh, as you know, is that there's a lot of advanced capability built into a very small package. And what we're doing very successfully is taking that technology and leveraging it into other products where it can be utilized to enter new fields, such as smaller, lower, lower weight, lower power jammers, uh, communications systems, and even uh, the delivery of digital payloads. And, and so, wh how, so what are some of the products, if, can you be specific in terms of where some of this technology is gonna surface or is already surfacing in your product line? It's surfacing in a variety of uh, products from, that range from ground-based and airborne systems through space-based. We use it for communications, uh, for radars, uh, and for electronic warfare. So it is a, it's a true multifunction capability. Let me, you know, you mentioned exportability. You guys are operating at a very high end, just like all the major contractors here are at the highest end of capability, and particularly some of the things that you're doing are particularly sensitive. Jammers, for example, space capabilities, and, and the variety of technologies that even go into something that's like MTS, multi-spectral targeting, where the sensors themselves have quite a lot of technology in it, where the United States likes to protect that very, very closely. How are you guys working the exportability of this whether through design workarounds, engagements with the DOD and the folks at State and at Commerce, to be able to export some of this product um, at a time when, um, you know, there are always concerns that the United States is, you know, giving technology away or, or you know, potentially undermining its position in, by, by doing so. So we work very carefully with our, very closely with our customers in the early design stages uh, to make sure that we understand uh, the technology that can be exported and we work to make our designs uh, as exportable as we possibly can. 
let me take you to one last question. You guys have been known for you know placing those big bets and focusing and making that company fund an investment in future capabilities. Where do you think the major breakthroughs in your space are going to come? Where are you, insofar as you want to tell <laughs> tell us and and, uh, and and everybody else this, but where do you think the major breakthroughs are going to be? What are the things that excite you as a guy who spent decades in this business and knows the technology in the market? You know, what where 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 is that puck going? Where are you skating to be able to intercept that puck, say in five years, and the kind of capabilities you guys will have to bring to bear to to remain on the forefront? So we're focused in a number of areas. What particularly excites us is the next generation capabilities, uh, the next generation uh, platforms for uh, air defense uh, in space, and of course uh, on the ground. Uh, I mentioned several of them, high energy lasers, very exciting field. Uh, space protection in general is a very exciting field, uh, as is uh, cyber and uh, precision navigation in time. We are, uh, you know, we're, our, our, our focus, okay, is to, in a nutshell, uh, put the magic back in the hands of the warfighter and make the world a safer place. Rick, thanks very much for spending time with us and hope you have a successful air show. Thanks, Fargo. Good talking to you. Mm -hmm.